everybody everybody knows what these things are, right? Yes. This one right here and that one right there. Okay, there's a little soldering worksheet you got that you've already, most of you probably already done it. Have you soldered? You know how to solder? Mm -hmm. Soldering is not really that hard to do. After you soldered, you know, four or five wires, did a good job of it, you know how to solder. <laughs> but you do have to have the most important thing to remember when you're soldering is to have good clean wire. You know, if the wire is chalky and dirty and ugly looking, you ain't going to be able to solder stick to it. The wire's got to get hot enough to melt the solder before the solder will stick to the wire. So I always stick the solder down to the wire, and you might even have seen that. I stick the, if I've got a wire here, I'm going to stick the tip of my soldering iron to the wire. And then I'm going to actually, while the soldering iron is, is really hot and, and touching the wire, I'm going to poke my solder in there, and I'm going to let it touch the iron and the wire at the same time. Then the solder begins to melt, and what it does is it flows in and around those strands really good. You see, so get the soldering iron. And another thing you need to recognize, if your soldering iron is not getting hot, you may need to actually tighten the screws a little bit or clean it where the tip goes into the iron because a little bit of oxidation there will keep the soldering iron from getting hot. If it's right, when you pull that trigger, that thing's smoking. Got me? Now, Daniel always liked to use a pencil soldering iron, and that's okay, but most of the time for automotive work, a pencil soldering iron don't work that great. Furthermore, you'll forget to turn the doggone thing off. That's why I like a trigger soldering iron, because when you let go, it ain't hot no more. But a lot of times people forget and leave those pencil ones plugged in, and it kind of, you know, gets them too hot. And all, that kind of all right, let me move on. Electrical test two. Now we're going to back up next week and do test one because I, you know, uh, there was a, some confusion that went on with the girl that grades the papers. The amount of lead and acid in a battery determines the amount of energy the battery can store. Is that true or is that false? True. The amount of lead and acid. That's right. Okay. Automotive batteries have eight cells connected in series. True. Eight. Seriously. How many volts per cell? No, two per cell. Yeah, about two. So. 2 into 12 is 6. Six. There you go. So you're talking about a 16-volt battery or what? What's up? All right. A discharge battery will not freeze. That means False. there's no fluid in it, right? False. No, discharge doesn't mean no fluids in it. A battery can be full of, you know, full of the acid and still be discharged. You remember what I told you happens when a battery goes dead, all the electrons move to the positive plate? Whenever you take your battery charger and hook up, you're actually moving the electrons to the, to the back to the negative plate. Because it's sort of like you're stretching a spring. You know, when you put all those electrons on the negative plate, they want to go to the positive plate. Right. And if you provide a path, they're going to go over there. That's like whenever you stretch a rubber band, it wants to go back to where it was. And when you let go of it, it's going to go back to so where it was. Up all the power if you don't have anything to reach Everything moves over to the other side where it wants to be. It ain't going nowhere. You know, you can hook up to a dead battery. And here's something else I've told, talked about before. You know, and I mentioned this, I think, last semester. You can charge a battery up backwards. Yeah. And if you do, you got a problem. Exactly. You know what I mean? That's like a bomb. If you got a battery charge, if it's totally and completely dead, and you some ding dong comes along and hooks the battery charger up to the wrong, to the negative, to the positive, you know, and you can charge that thing up to where it's totally charged up, it's good and hot, but it's totally backwards and all that. And I don't know how many times we used to see that when I worked at a gas station in the 70s. And they bring one in and say, hey, I charge it up backwards. You know, you had to hook a, a light bulb up and kill it and charge it back up the right way, you know. And most people don't even know about that, you know. But anyway, uh, specific gravity compares the density of any liquid to the density of an equal amount. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, number four. As the battery gets colder, less current output is available. Yes. Okay, that's why they got cold cranking amps. And at zero degrees, you got fewer cold cranking amps than you do at 32, right? Yeah. Okay, a specific gravity compares the density of any liquid to the density of an equal amount of water. That's true. Specific gravity, you know, you're, gonna, you're actually comparing it. Uh, and we're going to find out when you're looking at weight and stuff and volume and all, water is the standard for everything. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about, you got, uh, what is a gram of water? I mean, how much volume of water is there in a gram, you know? A cubic centimeter of water weighs a gram. Okay, so what's a thousand cubic centimeters of water? <laughs> Think about this, huh? A thousand cubic centimeters of water is what? Did you, I want to say you said a liter. It is a, you're right. It's a liter. Okay, so how much does a liter weigh? One, one gram of water, one liter is one pound? Yeah, one, no, 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 no. One liter is one kilogram. One kilogram. Which is 2.2 .2 pounds, right? 2.2, .2, okay. Think about that. Okay, now let's go back over to the English side. A pint of water, an ounce of water weighs an ounce. A pint of water weighs a pound. A quart of water weighs two pounds. 
A gallon of water weighs eight pounds. Hmm. You hear? So they use water for the standard because everybody knows about water. You know what I mean? So they use that. They do that in the metric side too. So one cubic centimeter of water weighs a gram. A thousand, you know, and a paper clip is about the same amount of weight, right? Mm -hmm. So if you got a thousand paper, normal size paper clips, you got a kilogram, which is 2.2. .2. And I've never had bothered with any drugs, so I don't know how much heroin it is to have a kilo, you know. All right, but just think about it. You're always thinking that water is a standard. You know, my wife was confused about that because she was wanting to know if 16 ounces of wheat would be the same as 16 ounces of water. No. I mean, volume or weight? We gotta, what are you talking? You know what I'm saying? Well, there's a lot of tickets in there, so I'll just pick them up later. What's, what else is in here? Oh, them sprack plugs. Okay. okay. i got to decide who's going to do this spark plug job here and all that because I've, I've given them. Okay, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll get with you on those tickets later on. The parts lady came in here and dumped that on me. Don't let me forget about that. All right. Okay, what we got here, let me see, where am I at here? I got away from this. Whew. The Pacific gravity compares the density of any liquid to the density of an equal amount of water. That's true. Because the cells in a battery are separated from each other, it's necessary to perform the hydrometer test on each cell. True. True. Each cell can have a separate amount. Now, you remember what I told you guys about testing each cell, the voltage of each cell? Ever show you that? Yeah. You can test the voltage of each cell. Some remember it, some don't. Must have been a day that Joe slept late. Okay. I've drawn this before. Look, you got a post, you got one, two, three, one, two, three, and a post. That's a battery, right? All right, so you're going to measure from here to here and write it down. You're going to measure from here to here and write it down. 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 From here to here, write it down. From here to here, write it down. This one and this one, you're going to add those together. Because one of them is going to be a really small reading, the other will be pretty big. But so you add those two together. Now, every one of these, if in a perfect world, every one of these should be within tenth, a tenth of a volt of each other. And you're going to do each one of these tests with the battery. You're supposed to do it with the battery loaded and with the battery charging, right? The only problem is, is that unless the battery is really strong and charge, you know, doing it loaded is, eh, I mean, you can do it loaded. It's a sun three-minute battery test, what they call that. I learned that when I was at Mazda school down there. Okay, and uh, so anyway, if the reading that you get, like you, you're going to hook your little piece of wire just so it's dipping in the water, measure it with your meter, you're going to read like two volts in there on each one. If you go, you load it, measure it, turn off your load. I mean, charge it, you know, is either charge and load. You're supposed to do it charging for each cell and loaded for each cell. Now you don't turn your charger on and let it charge the whole time you're doing the test because the voltage is going to steadily be going up as you do the test. You know, hook your meter up, be watching your meter, turn it on charge, read it, turn it back off, write it down. Move it to the next cell. There's actually a sheet that I give out on that typically. You know, usually I think you're probably going to get one in pretty quicker. But long and short of it is, I can actually, when I used to work at a dealership and I wanted to say if a battery was bad or good, before we actually had this thing, I would actually run that test. And I'd say, this thing's got a bad battery. And I would say, why? I'd say, because it has a one cell that's only got, you know, 1.4 volts. Hey, Jim. And another, uh, the rest of the cells have got like 2.1. So we're not a bad cell. All right. We got you. Uh, we'll be through it here in just a minute. You're like me. I Oh, okay. All right. Okay, let's move over here. He's got a. All right, let's move over here. So, some vehicles have convenient connection points under the hood and away from the battery for jump starting. Yes. Can you think of one that we have out here like that? The green truck. The GMC. Yeah. All right. Automotive batteries are called what? Secondary cells. That's not one of the choices, Melissa. Okay. Uh, slow charging of a battery uses a current of what? 15 to 20. Everybody like that? Everybody like that answer? Yeah. What about three to what about three to ten? Maybe, yeah, possibly. Routine battery maintenance does not include what? Reversing terminal connections. You never reverse terminal connections. 
Battery load test or high uh, rate discharge test measures terminal voltage while the battery is supplying current for how long? 30. 15 30. seconds. 15 30. seconds. As a matter of fact, that charging system tester, that snap on tester out there, when you put a load on there, there's a timer that starts flashing that light for 15 seconds. 15 seconds is the amount of time. And that's kind of like it's not supposed to go below 9.6 volts if you load it, you know, based on your uh, the cold cranking amps, right? You know, remember that. No. Okay, your job is to tell me how much you're supposed to load it and how you're supposed to measure it. Think about that. Well, the machine's got everything right there with it to do that, but you got to know how, what to measure it on. Every piece of information you need is right there. Which of the following is not a color used in a built-in hydrometer? Black. What do you think? C? White. Well, white. Yeah. Open circuit or at rest voltage of a charged battery is what? A. Huh? Just kidding. Don't look at me like that. Oh, you said A. I thought you said 8. Yeah, I said yeah you're right. You're right. 12.6. Yeah. You've never read it as a mouse. You're answer. Sorry about that. Uh, I bobbled the ball. Everybody got your... Uh,